there's still silver linings for the silver and black. Tough loss yesterday. Fun watch, though. Uh, we were more competitive than anybody expected us to be with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I know Antonio Pierce said that we had the formula. We didn't quite, um, but there was a lot of opportunities where we could have almost had that. Um, like any game, there's pros and cons, but let's start with some of those silver linings because, look, at the end of the day, we're, we're, uh, when you're a fan of any team, there's going to be the ups and downs. And if you only are happy when the team is doing really well or on a run or you know, winning the Super Bowl, you're going to set yourself up to be miserable and not enjoy the viewing experience and not enjoy the game. And at the end of the day, like I said, this is my reaction from just watching the game. There's very, very few people who really understand and really studied this game. Like you have to understand from a player's perspective, I'm a retired Raiders linebacker. When we're watching film, we could be watching a power play that we've seen that every team runs the exact same way. And it, it, it's a mundane play that went for one yard. We will watch that play 25 times in a row. We will be looking for so many different things. We will be studying the alignments in pre-snap of, of offensive linemen, uh, the timing and cadence of when the center snaps and when he looks down and come head back up and then snaps. Uh, it could be, you know, the, the backs alignments and that's all just pre-snap stuff. And then you're watching, you know, just so much that's going on. So when we're coming out here and even people analyzing the Raiders games, how many of them have really studied, studied the game? I know I haven't. <laughs> and I know that most of the people on TV also have not. They don't have the time in real time to, you know, study all the nuance of what's going on in that game. They're also giving you a top of mind, first view, glance and take. They just have more knowledge of the game and what's going on. And they have a, a, an ability to articulate that. Um, to the fans of these complex football situations in, in a more easy to digest way. I even heard um, Kurt Warner talk about this recently. He said, I don't know where these, I mean, it's honestly, you know, tell me because I want to use my time better. You know, I'm, I, I don't have the time in one day after the game to study and really study every quarterback position. And yet some people are beating me to the punch and able to talk, you know, about all these different things. And he is, you know, what a great, great quarterback, that Super Bowl winning quarterback. And um, it, it just, it's that attention to detail. It takes time. Um, so again, all these things are just what we're noticing. You know, we're watching the game. We're not the ones analyzing. We don't know all of the little details that go into it. Um, but again, you know, we played better than people expected us to. We were competitive. Um, there were moments we felt like, you know, we could have had the game. I really like how J Jacoby Myers played. Um, and I had to take it in from kind of like the energy that players were bringing kind of perspective because I also was watching my kids yesterday during the game. So I had, you know, a million fires to put out and they're demanding. And so I wasn't full focus, but I just... I remember looking at the, the numbers after the game, and I think, I think he had like six catches for 50-something yards or 60-something yards. I remember thinking that he had way bigger numbers than that because it seemed like every time I was looking up, he was making great plays, running great routes, making great catches, and bringing in a, a really great energy. Um, and you could just tell he was fired up. He was in the zone. And you, you can feel that, you know, he, the way he'd get up and celebrate and um, I, again, I just liked how he played. Uh, I know we don't have the best receiver room in the NFL, and especially after Devontae leaving, it's nice to see guys coming in there and bringing some electricity. Um, and on that note, you know, Gardner played better too. Uh, efficient, 117 quarterback rating. Um, I think he was 24 or 30, a couple tutties. You know, there's the, the, the fumble, and that's tough. It happens, but um, that was a step up there. Um, Bowers, man, he's, this is, you know, silver lining and, and a negative, but Bowers is so dependable and so good, it's, he needs to be targeted in the game plan. You need to make it mandatory, like they're trying to make the run game mandatory, get Bowers the ball. And we, there was a stretch of about half the game that he did not even get targeted. So, 
that tells me that like, it's not in the game plan to target him on those. And when you have such a great player like that and he's getting a first down every time he catches the ball, get him the dang ball. Um, but man, I love that, that kid as a player. He's 21 years old, dude. He's so much football ahead of him and he's already the most dependable guy on our offense. Uh, sky is the limit for this kid. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, and then the interception, man, that was a big play by Trevon Merrig. Uh, is it Trayvon? And I remember thinking, get in there, get in there. I yelled and I startled my, my two-year-old daughter. And she's, what's going on? You know, But I, I remember thinking, my first thought, and I think I said it out loud, was, oh, great, now we have to have our offense try to get the touchdown. And I was like, oh, I heard myself in real time say that. And it's like, you, you they're down there, and then you're like, all right, we'll get it in, we'll get it in. And yet you're not going to be surprised if they don't um and again we tried to run 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 and, and the chiefs have a great run defense i think they're top three or four and five, i don't know somewhere in there they're one of the top run defenses in the nfl and we got brock bowers we got situations where you can put somebody one-on-one -on -one and say go you know make a contested catch here be the better player and we've we've got people that can do that so that was tough to watch, you know, really sticking out the, the run game there that we don't have a great running offense. And at the same time, I kind of had the thought that I don't know. I don't know anybody's mindset. I can't say what the play caller, you know, gets his mindset is on this. But like, OK, they stopped us once. Damn, we're going to run it again. You know, they can't stop us every time. We're this close to the end zone. We're going to get in there on one of them. Uh, you know, percentage wise, like if we just run it four times in a row, one of them's going to get in the zone where this that we're this close. And um, and that I, I wonder if like part of that, there's like a little bit of a pride there that starts kicking in. It's like, well, they're going to expect us to pass. Now I'm going to keep running it. I'm going to find a way in there on the run. And, and I don't know. There's a million things. And that's above uh, what I know and my pay grade. But that's uh, that was really frustrating because who knows? Maybe we'd be sitting on a dub today after uh, getting that touchdown. You never know the way the game could have gone. Um, and then I also watched Max Crosby's, you know, interview after the game. And, you know, that was telling as well as just in the sense, not telling, but like it was such an energy of like Marshawn, I'm just here so I don't get fined, you know, and yet he's being professional and respectful. But it's whenever a player in an interview is just giving very general taglines. Yeah, I mean, it's not good enough. We, we've got to find a way to win. Yeah, like I said, we just, you know, we got to find a way to win. Not good enough. I'm, there's nothing good about losing. We don't expect to lose. We've got to find a way to win. You've been, you know, it sucks losing. And, and then it sucks having to do these interviews in the locker room when you're trying to cool off and you're trying to make sense of things and you're pissed off. And it just turns into like a professionalism of like, all right, I'm just going to do this, you know. And sometimes when you're really getting your butt kicked too on the field and getting blown out, it, like that's a professionalism as well. There's no energy on the field. Another silver, silver lining though, in a situation like this, two and six, not a great spot to be, but you get a pulse and a gauge on the mindsets of players. Because the, the players that aren't going to turn down, they're not going to buy into the energy of what's going on or how down morale might be or whatever. It, when you see a guy that's just got a different flip switched in his mind and he's going gung-ho and playing with passion and playing with energy and a dog and just foaming at the mouth and getting after people no matter what and no matter what the score is and you know talking smack and bringing energy or whatever it is that they bring to the game and that that doesn't fluctuate and go like up and down throughout the season or throughout a game that's a strong-minded individual that's a strong-minded player and we're right now in a position to kind of see who some of those dudes are um it's also a strong-minded person too of uh, I, I'm, I don't even know if I want to go there because I wasn't. That's not the point I was making. Wherever if even the coaches are at, or whatever, kind of the energy or the situation is in the in the building, um, if they can say, "I'm not going to take any of this on. I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to keep getting after it." You know, um, it's a love of the game thing. It's a playing for legacy, playing for pride type of thing. Um, and I think we're in a good position to kind of see who some of those dudes are. And, you know, I also think it's not too late to make something of this season. You know, there's still 
what is it? So, uh, set eight, nine games left, you know, a whole lot can happen in nine games. Um, but like I said, to start this, you got to find the things that are worth celebrating, the things that you do admire, because if you're only just going to be pissed off and upset if it's a win loss or if things are going well and, and, and right into that, it's kind of like the player thing, strong minded fan, you know? Let's be that. Um, anyways, let me know, by the way, Raider Nation, if there's anything that you want me to talk on. Like I said, I don't have the time to keep up and study in detail that it takes to really know what's going on, all the games in the NFL, let alone even the Raider games. Uh, but if there's certain topics or things that you want me to talk on, um, that I can create a video around, then I'll dive into watching the film on those specific things. I'm trying to serve the audience, uh, give y'all what you want. So let me know what you want and uh, keep on keeping on.